In this video, we'll discuss the railing tools. We'll look at the railing defaults and specifying railing types. We'll look at how to adjust the rail style, the height of railings, rail profiles, how to manually adjust newels or posts on a railing, and how to do railing pony walls at railings that follow stairs. I'm going to begin in this completed plan in Chief Architect. We're going to add a deck onto the back of this house, and we'll look at some different options we have for railings. The railing tools can be found under Build, Railing and Deck, or you can find the Railing Parent tool in your architectural toolbar right here. The options we have in the Child tool palette then are Straight and Curved General Railing Tools and Straight and Curved Deck Railing Tools. The deck railing tools are used for the exterior perimeter of a deck room. Using these walls will automatically create a deck room, complete with deck framing. Other than that, there's no functional difference between the railing and the deck railing options. You can always change your mind later. For instance, if I use the straight railing tool and create a room, and then I realize that I want that room to be a deck, I can just open the room and change the room type. Now, if we double click on any tool in the toolbar, we'll open the defaults for that tool so that then we can choose how it operates before we draw with it. In this case, I'm going to double click on our straight deck railing tool in the toolbar so we can open our deck railing defaults. Off to the right in this dialog, you can see a preview of our default railing. So when I use the railing tool, this is the style of railing that I will draw. Now, we're going to take a closer look at this dialog. As you may have noticed, the options in this dialog look the same as when we edit walls. Railings and walls are essentially the exact same thing. However, when you mark a wall as a railing, like you can see right here, it opens up additional options for editing this wall which are specific to a railing. Any wall can become a railing, and any railing can revert to a normal wall simply by toggling this checkbox. Since walls and railings are so similar, we're going to go ahead and skip over the first seven panels in this dialog. You can learn more about these in the video on editing walls. Just know that all the options you have for walls, you also have for railings, including your automatic roof controls but we're going to skip down to the first of our three panels specific for editing railings, the Rail Style panel. This allows us to specify the basics of what type of railing we're drawing, whether this railing is using newels and balusters, is a solid railing, which makes it a half wall, whether it is open without balusters, open with a middle rail, or whether we're using panels. When we select the Panel option, that means that down in our Newell's Ballisters panel, we're going to be specifying a panel type rather than a baluster type. For our plan, I'm going to select the baluster option. Then, we can choose what the Newell's or posts are doing. Does the rail pass over the top of the Newell? Does the post extend up to the ceiling? Does it extend to the ceiling with an automatic supporting beam? Or does the rail attach to the newel post? The last option is the only option that allows us to manually specify the height of the newels or posts. For all the other options, the newel or post will automatically follow either the height of the overall railing or the ceiling height of the room. So I'm going to select rail to post because I want the newels to be higher than the railing, but not all the way up to the ceiling. Next, we have options for what should happen when the railing meets a wall. Do you need a half post against that wall, a full post, or no post at all? And you have options for both the start and the end of that railing. Then we can specify if we're using a top and bottom rail, and if so, how far off the floor should the bottom rail start? And the final option on this rail style panel allows the railing to automatically follow the contours of the terrain, 
such as when we're drawing a fence, or to follow stairs, so we can draw our railings manually, rather than specifying the railing from within the stairs dialog. Next, we have the Newell's Balusters panel. In this panel, we can specify the height of the overall railing, as well as the height of the posts if we've checked rail to post in the rail style panel. I'm going to set these two inches taller than the railing and set the width to five inches. Then we can specify the style of the posts or newels and how far apart they are. I'm going to set them to 60 inches apart, although this can also be set manually as I'll show later on. As well as the style of either the balusters or the panels sitting between the posts or newels. For each of these options, we can either choose a basic option in the drop down here and here, or we can click on library to open up the library and find more style options for our newels or our balusters. At the bottom of this dialog are options for how we want the railing to appear in our floor plan view. And the final panel specific to railings in this dialog is for our rails. Here we can specify the dimension of the top and the bottom rail, as well as the middle rail and beam if we've chosen those options in the rail style panel. If we select the top rail, you can see a preview of the molding profile we're using here, as well as the width and height of that railing. If we want to choose a different rail profile, we can select Replace, select a different molding in the library. I'm going to select OK, and that will update my railing default. Now, any railing I draw using the straight or curved deck railing tool will follow what we just specified. But I can still open any individual railing after it is drawn if I want something other than the default railing style. The non-deck railing tools have a different set of defaults. Some people will use the normal railing defaults for their interior railings and the deck railing for their exterior. And remember, if we use the deck railing tool, we can always open the deck room that it automatically creates and change it to a non-deck room type such as a porch. Drawing railings is the same as drawing walls. We'll click and drag to draw the railing. We'll need to have a completely enclosed room if we want to have a floor platform. Let's get into a 3D view so we can see the deck we've created. Then I'm going to go to the window menu at the top of my screen, then go to tile vertically so that my 3D view and plan view are side by side. Now, as you can see, I have a roof over just part of this deck. So that portion needs to have posts that extend up to support the load of the roof. So I'm going to use my break wall tool to divide this railing into two sections. I'll do this by selecting the railing. Then down in my edit toolbar, I'll select the break tool. Then I'll click on the area of the wall that I would like to break into two sections. In this case, right where the roof ends. Then I'll open the section that needs to bear the load of the roof, and under Rail Style, I'm going to select Post to Beam. Then, under Rails, I'm going to double check the width and height of that beam to make sure that it's strong enough to support my roof. I'll select OK to apply the changes. Now, while we've set a maximum spacing for our newels or posts in the railing dialog, we can also manually adjust their placement after the railing is drawn. To do this, I'm going to select the railing, and then down in the Edit toolbar, I'll select Move Newels. Then, you can see it highlights all of the newels or posts on this railing. And at the very bottom of each post or newel, you'll see a Move Edit handle. You can then use this edit handle to move any post along this railing you can also use this dialog to add additional newels or posts if you find that there's not enough support in a particular area. As you move or add newels, the balusters will adjust their spacing around them. This plan has a few railings that were already drawn. For instance, 
the lattice you'll see under the deck here. It was drawn on the foundation level, which is how I have one railing above my deck platform and one underneath. I'm going to open up the lattice so you can see how this was accomplished. As you can see, this is a railing wall, and under our rail style panel, I have selected panels instead of balusters. For my purposes, I have used a top and a bottom rail, but some lattice work will not have this. Down in the Newell's balusters panel, I set the height of the railing to be larger than the distance between the terrain and the deck above it. When I place the railing underneath the deck, it will automatically crop it to fit between them. I then opened the library to find a lattice style. In this case, this was found in the bonus catalog, Landscaping Accents. Another option we have to adjust this railing is to set it back in the deck room. We can do this using our horizontal offset. So if we look at this railing over here, right now it is sitting right at the edge of the deck room. But if I want, I can offset it so that there's a little bit of space at the edge of the deck. To do this, I'll open the railing section, and under the rail style panel, I'll set the horizontal offset to 3 inches. Then, when I come back to my deck, you can see that it's inset 3 inches from the edge. Now if we rotate around this direction, the stairs leading off of this side of the deck do not currently have a railing, so I have two options. First, I could open these stairs, and you can see we have the same three panels for editing the railing through the stair dialog, although the first of these looks a little different. The railing panel allows us to specify if we have a railing on in the right or left of the staircase, and that goes for both open sides or when it's up against a wall. The Newell's balusters and rails panels are identical to when editing a railing wall. The second option is to draw a railing over top of the stairs, open the railing, and under Rail Style, specify that it follows the stairs. Sometimes this is the easiest way to extend the style of a railing from the deck when we've gone to a lot of effort to edit it. Since we've modified our default, I can just use my railing tool to draw over top of the stairs, then open the railing and mark it as Follow Stairs. You can use this same general idea when doing a rake wall, which is a pony wall with a railing on top and a solid wall on the bottom that follows the slope of the stairs. To do that, you simply need to have a pony wall that bumps up exactly next to the stairs rather than on top of it. You can see an example of this over by these stairs. If I open up one of the railings, there are three settings that are accomplishing this rake wall type. First, it is marked as a railing in the general panel. Second, under wall types, I specified a railing as the upper wall type, selected it to be a pony wall, and there's different wall type beneath it. The height off of the floor in this instance is negative because the stairs are proceeding down from a deck. But for an interior wall, this value would typically be about the height of the lowest riser. They usually start around 6 inches. Then finally, just as we did for the railing we drew over top of the stairs, under the rail style panel, we'll need to make sure that the railing is selected to follow the stairs. If the pony wall railing is bumped right up next to a stair section, it will create this rake wall effect. Now, if I pan around here, you can see a couple more examples of railing pony walls for the front porch and for the outer fence. Again, if I double click to open up the fence in front, you can see under wall types, I have a railing set as the main wall type and a brick wall set as the lower wall type specifying it as a pony wall. And if we go back to the general panel, you can see the main difference between a fence and a railing, other than the fact that it follows the terrain, which is that it does not have any room definition. So these walls will not create a room and cannot be used to generate floor or ceiling platform, 
which is perfect for a fence. While in this particular video, we've stayed on the exterior of the home, the railing tool and the options available will be the same for any interior railings as well. So as you can see, using the railing tool, you can create a wide variety of different railing styles for your plan. 